Hello again, and welcome back to this three-part tour of the Jupyter Notebook environment. In this final video, we're going to put all the information we've seen together to create a very short Jupyter Notebook that contains formatted text and Python code, and then export it into several different publishing formats. The document we'll make here is going to demonstrate a Python function that takes in an integer and produces a list of all the natural numbers that divide that integer. This is something akin to a homework assignment or a programming assignment, where you might want to include not only code, but some nice formatted added explanatory text to go with it. We're not going to discuss the actual algorithm itself here, just how to enter it into Jupyter along with some text that explains it. So first of all, let's open up a new Jupyter notebook. And let's give it a title by clicking here, and I'm going to call this divisor function. The way I'd like to format this document as a whole is to start off with some text explaining how the code is set up. And if this is going to be a homework environment, maybe I should include my name and uh, the name of the course as well. And then I'm going to put in the code itself and then a final bit of text that wraps it up. So this first cell here in the notebook, I'm going to change it to markdown because it's going to create just text. Then I'll add a first level header for the title of this document. Then a second level header for my name and let's say the date that I'm creating it and then maybe a third level header here to indicate that this is an introduction. Now below the third level header, I'm going to type some text. This text is going to include a bullet list explaining the steps that the code takes. Additionally, I'm going to mark in boldface any of the variables that I type. So now that that's done, I would like to view it as formatted text, and I will do that by hitting Shift Enter, and there it is. Now the cell below it is where I planned on putting the code itself, so I'm just going to leave it as code. I have the code written up separately uh, over here in a text editor, and so I'm just going to cut and paste it in. Let me test it by hitting Shift Enter, and oops, apparently I have a syntax error, so let me see if I can find it, and there it is. So let me fix that error and re-execute, and now I see that I have no syntax errors. In the cell below it, I'm gonna demonstrate the use of this function by just running one example. Again, this is a code cell because I'm executing code and not formatting text. So finally, in the bottom cell, I'm going to put some wrapping up text here, and so I'm going to change this to markdown and type in some closing remarks. So now we have a professional looking document that combines text and executable code. Now what we do with this thing once we've written it is to export it into a format that can be read and shared. Let's take a look at the menu options for how we can do this. First of all, note that Jupyter auto saves all its notebooks, so you shouldn't have to worry about backing up. However, if you want to manually save the document, you click on this icon here. This will save it in the directory in which you opened it. If you're using the notebook through a cloud service like I am here, you'll find it online. If you're using Anaconda, it's done locally, and it's in the directory that you navigated to when you launched the Jupyter app. You might want to get this notebook to a different place, however, so we should learn how to download the notebook. Let's click on the file menu and there's an option called download as. There are several options in here, three of which will make sense for you. One is the notebook format dot ipynb. That stands for ipython notebook. Jupyter notebooks were formerly called ipython notebooks and so that is, is mirrored in the file extension here. What this will do is download your notebook as a raw Jupyter notebook that you could upload to someone else's server if you wanted to, but it can only be opened in the Jupyter environment. Another option for downloading is HTML. Downloading to HTML converts the notebook into a nicely formatted HTML file that can then be opened in a web browser. However, note that if you do this, any Python code you enter in cannot be executed. This is only for viewing. Another option is PDF via LaTeX, which converts the notebook into a nice looking PDF using the LaTeX mathematical typesetting system. And once again, if you download as PDF, this is view only and none of the code that you entered in is executable. So any notebook you create can be exported into these three professional publishing formats and a few others. Let's take a look at some of the other options in the menus while we're here. 
First, let's take a look at the menu options that are here along the top of the header. We've already visited part of the file menu, but here you can also open a new notebook with a specified kernel, open a notebook from a different source that you might have been sent, for example, make a copy, rename your notebook. You can even revert back to a previous checkpoint in an earlier saved version of your notebook, which is very handy, and view a print preview. Next door in the edit menu mostly has to do with editing cells, such as copying, pasting, merging two cells that are separate, splitting a cell into two different parts, and so on. In the view menu, we have some ways of toggling the header here, for example, and the toolbar, which is directly below it. Let's turn both of those back on. In the insert menu, uh, we can insert a cell at a specified place inside a notebook, either above or below an existing cell. In the cell menu, give you some options for running cells, including, for example, changing the kind of a cell or clearing all your output. In the kernel menu is where you go if you want to change the kernel, for example, to a different programming language, or if your computation gets stuck or you lose contact with the kernel. For example, if you're using a cloud service, you can interrupt or restart the kernel just to reset everything. The help menu mostly consists of links to external websites, like the markdown link takes you to the page that we saw in one of the earlier videos about uh, GitHub uh, documentation syntax and so forth. These are very useful, and these are here are some commonly used libraries that are very commonly used with Python 3. We won't talk about the data menu option here because that doesn't actually appear in all installations of Jupyter. Below the menu options are some toolbar options, which are mainly just shortcuts to common commands. We already visited the save feature, which will force an autosave on your Jupyter notebook, as you see it just happened. This plus sign is for adding a cell, inserting a cell below. This is for cutting, copying, and pasting a cell. These two arrows are for moving a cell up or down. For example, if I select this cell, I can move it down or back up. This button here is just a shortcut for shift to enter that runs the cell. These two buttons interrupt or stop the kernel in case a computation gets out of hand. We've already seen this menu option for changing the type of a cell. And then finally, this button here is extremely handy. It just opens up a command palette that shows you all the keyboard shortcuts that you can use in a Jupyter notebook. And uh, this is a, a fairly long list, so if you wanted to search for it, you can just query it in the search bar. For example, if I were looking for somehow merging cells, this will call up all the possible options. And I can see, for example, that command shift M on a Mac at least is for merging cells. So that uh, brings us to the end of this brief three video tour of the Jupyter Notebook system. Thanks for watching.